B. I like how I had my voice amplified. I had that done surgically, so I don't have to worry about that. Just the bat, don't ask me where I keep the batteries. Okay, no. It is a great pleasure to be with you here this morning, and hopefully we're going to have some fun, and we're going to talk a little bit about spiritual gardening. I had an experience the other day, uh, well yesterday as a matter of fact, I'm sitting in my, in, uh, my living room, doorbell rings, and two young missionaries are standing at the door, and they prepare to give me a, a message. And uh, they said, well, what would you think if, um, you know, if, if you found out that there's prophets on the earth again? You know, wouldn't that excite you? And I said, no, not really. And they kind of looked a little befuddled. And I said, well, what about the possibility that everyone's a prophet and they don't know it? What about if we all could connect to source and we could all connect to God and we could all receive revelation in our own lives? Think you'd need one prophet when you got a billion of them? They didn't know how to answer that. I wasn't going to try to embarrass them. Um, what my point was, was that oft times we have old constructs that we think we need to have the leader and we'll follow. We're the sheep. But maybe we've come to the time where we've evolved enough to comprehend our own greatness. You see, that's a big thought to fit into our minds. And, and it doesn't fit when we have all this other junk in there. And how do we do that? You see, we got something special here. Um, I'm gonna, um, hopefully I won't embarrass somebody. We have a visitor here. Her name is Antonia. And Antonia is right there. And we have a, pra we have a, a, a practitioner class. No, we have a foundations class going on at my house. So my mom went for a walk. And she got a little tired, you know, she ended up a few blocks away from the house. And so she's sitting at the bench, and she meets Antonia, who was working on cleaning the school. And so they had a little conversation, and then um, my mom walked home. Antonia was a little worried about her and wanted to make sure she got home safe, so she came by the house. And as she's coming by the house, our class is letting out. And the class, people are coming out, and they're floating about this high off the ground. They have this energy and this vibration, and it's all good. And Antonia says, what's that? <laughs> okay, what is that? I want to know about that, because that is really fun. And so we spent about, oh no, an hour and a half talking about what that is. Okay, and so as a spiritual center, that's what we're cultivating, is that joy and that fun and that greatness in each of you, that prophet that you are. Because you have the divine right to talk to God about your life, about your family, about your decisions, and you're part of that great wholeness of information. And it's all out there waiting for you to tap into. Can you imagine the, the place that we would be where, you know, and I think sometimes we get a little bit sidetracked when we start listening to our ego and we think that's God. And then we declare war on somebody. Okay? No, not that at all. That's still small voice that speaks only out of a place of love. Only out of a place of compassion. Sometimes we have a hard time seeing that. We have a hard time seeing that because we have all these weeds in our life. And now we're going to talk a little bit about spiritual gardening. Let's go ahead and queue up. So, <laughs> we all been there? Okay. You know, yeah, I got a few weeds. That's, to that's hog weed. I thought I had weeds. You know, can you imagine somebody come up to you going, I only got four weeds. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so you're thinking, oh, okay. This is the life of a, of a practitioner. When we as practitioners go and work with someone, people have these weeds in their lives, and they're choking them, and they want us to fix it. But you see, practitioners don't fix anything. The big secret about being a practitioner is our job is to see the truth. See, we don't see the weeds. The weeds have all this stuff around them. What we see is the truth, the potential. Okay, let's go to the next one. So. We want to get started. Can you imagine that, being that pregnant? 
Oh, you know, we're enthusiastic. You know, we, got, we want to get started. We got some of the tools, but the problem looks overwhelming. Overwhelming. All these weeds are in our lives. Now, what are these weeds? Well, these weeds are those things that show up unintentionally. They're there, and we don't know why they're there. They keep coming back. They're not where we want them, or we think they're not where we want them. But the weed is a metaphor. The weed is a metaphor for those unintended creations in your life. You see, you're a creation machine. You can't turn it off. You're creating right now. And you will go and live into the next creation and the next creation and the next because that's what we do. We're living as God manifests right here. And what does God do? Creates. And so we create. But we don't know that we're creating, and so we end up with that. We've got our house, and it's covered in our creation. And those creations can show up as adversity. Those creations can show up as illness. They can show up as poverty. They can show up as lack. They can show up as that lousy boss that makes your life horrible. Okay? They can show up as of not being able to meet the rent. They can show up as your house seems like it's falling apart. Your car doesn't run. All that stuff, those are all creations. Those are all weeds. And they all have their start. You see, God didn't wake up one day and say, oh, I think I'm going to mess with Foster. Okay? And Foster's a good time to get my magnifying glass, and I'm going to start shining my bright light on him and roasting him. Let's see if he bursts into flames. Okay? And we feel like that. We feel like we're the victim of something bigger than us. And the truth is you are. You're a victim of you. And that you is bigger than you. You see, you're thinking about you as little you. The little you that's sitting in this chair that's got to get dressed every day, brush their teeth, comb their hair, take a shower, gets tired, wears out, that's little you. Big you makes that whole show go every day. All the time, 24-7. And while you're not conscious of it, sometimes that big you is coordinating with other big you's to make sure that life works out exactly in its divine perfection the way it's supposed to. And then we sit back and we wonder, how did this happen? i got to do all this and I'm pregnant. Okay? Or I'm sick. Or I'm poor. Or I got, you know, I've got stuff. But you can't. And you need to start. Let's go to the next one. Sometimes we feel like this. Okay? I'm bound up by the things in my life. I have no control. The weeds have taken over me. There's only one thing that's taken over you, and that's you. Sad news, but the truth. Okay? How we have believed at a very core level is manifesting in your life daily. Interesting thing is you have the power to change it at any instant. Now, the rules go like this. You have your own garden. You can't go and mess in somebody else's garden. Okay, that's kind of one of the rules of the game. <clears throat> Where your garden touches somebody else's garden, there has to be a negotiation. Okay, building a new house. And, uh, you know, my neighbors, I'm sure they're going to burn me at the stake when I get there. Because, you know, the house, the lot where we built our house was a beautiful open, it was a vacant lot. But it adjoined open space. And so they had an amazing view. And they thought that that view would be like that forever until this clown showed up and started digging a big old hole in the ground, sticking the house in there. Okay? And, I, I, you know, so what was the first thing they did? Well, they took my neighbor's lovely fences to make room for my house, and they pulled their fences out, and, and their life was in disarray. That's that fence line. Okay? And I told them, I told the home builders, you know, we've got to make sure that this is right, that we make up this, because my creation is touching theirs, and, 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 you know, and so we need to have this collaborative arrangement. And that has done, and they've, that's been done, and they're made whole. Now, their, their vista will always be changed because of my creation. 
They no longer have the open field. They get to see my house. They could have changed it. The realtor said, well, you know, if you guys don't want anybody to build there, buy the lot. It's only 70,000 bucks. Nobody wanted to do it. They just took a bet that the housing market would stay like it had been for a few years. How'd that work out for them? Welcome, Art Morales. Hey. <laughs> and that guy dancing out on the back deck. So happy to be here. OK? So those creations, like I said, our creation will impact others. Understand that. OK? And sometimes others will help us manifest our creation. Their creative ability is so powerful, we get drawn into their creation, and we become one of the flowers in their garden, believe it or not. One of those things giving it beauty. And that's one of the cool things about relationships, because we can do that. We can either be the thistle, or we can be a beautiful flower. Oftentimes, we choose to be the thistle, and that's not so good of a thing. Let's go to the next one. So we're starting now. OK, this is, this is creation 101. We want to pull a weed, and pretty much we're like that little guy crawling out there, and we're trying to get our head around, OK, so that guy's saying I'm creating my own reality, and I'm, all this stuff is me? Yep, it is. But it starts with just understanding and reaching out for that one thing and changing one thing. You see, when you do gardening, one of the rules is you can't pull all the weeds up at the same time. That takes a lot of fire. <laughs> You know, we see that happen as fire, you know, in the fire department. Some people accidentally burn other people's whole forest down, okay? But usually starts with one thing. And so that's how we have to do, and we have to be patient. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to go do a spot of gardening. Have you seen my ear protectors? <laughs> okay. Do you think, uh, you know, who's going to need the ear protectors? Well, her and him. And look at all the stuff that he's got. And he's going to be messing with her life. OK? So understand, as we create, it takes consciousness of how that impacts those around us. So sometimes we say, wow, I got this new spiritual groove I'm creating. I'm going to be this mega creator. And oh, yeah, I got those people in my family. Ah, they'll get it. You know, and I'm going to go in this direction. Then I'm going to go in that direction. Got to understand that our creations also have impact. And that's called wisdom and knowing that what we do affects us because we are us. That's, that thing of separation doesn't exist. What we do for us, we do for all. OK? Let's go to the next one. So what's a weed? All right? Now, weeds have a purpose. Those of you that are herbologists know that milk thistle has medicinal properties. OK? But it's also kind of a pain in the butt because it can show up and start choking things out but generally, if we look at weeds, if you look at that thistle, anybody ever try to pull a thistle? Bare hands? Do we do that with bare hands? No, it's covered with thorns. So generally speaking, we have to, one of the ways to differentiate a weed from a plant in our lives is does it cause us pain? Does it take away our joy? Okay, because you see, you're living here so that you can have joy every minute of every day. But some of our creations don't serve us, and they have thorns on them. Some of those creations, some of those weeds are very old weeds, okay? And they hurt every time we even think about it. Or we've worked so hard to create our beautiful garden, but we won't touch, touch that one weed, that one thing, because it's just so deep-rooted, and I just don't want to get in there, okay? What is that? Those weeds are called false belief. We believe something is true when it's not. And that's what we as practitioners do, is we sit down with you because somebody says, you know, things just never work out for me. I don't know why. Everybody hates me. And, you know, I try to fit in, and I just don't fit in. And, and, and it doesn't work, and then I end up losing my job, and now I'm unemployed again. Okay? And so I want you practitioner, to pray me up a really good job so I can go screw it up, okay? Really, all right, because that's what happens, okay? And so we have to fix the root cause of what's going on there and uncover the truth. You see, oftentimes we think that, reed, that weed is as good as gets. Well, it's not, okay? There's something beyond that. 
So those weeds have roots. Let's go to the next one. Okay. Oh, before I go that this one, I threw a picture of bindweed. Now bindweed doesn't have any thorns on it, and it even has a pretty little flower. And some of our illusions in life make them look like a like we intended it. It's like it's it's not so bad. He doesn't hit me that often. Most of the time it's good until he punches me out. Okay? Or, you know, well he 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 or she usually is nice, but every now and then it, you know, hits me with a brick. It's okay. That's, those are those things in our lives. So they, they, we think that we're settling, is what it is. Okay, we're settling for a bad thing. We're saying, well, it has a flower, so I guess it's okay. But bindweed spreads out. Okay, and it wraps around beneficial plants and chokes them out. So what does that look like? So in your life, you have this thing. Okay, let's say you have that wound in your soul that you got this core belief that you don't deserve love. Something happened to you as a kid. Somebody said, I can't believe how, you know, how obnoxious you are because you don't pick up your toys. I don't love you. I'm not going to love you until you pick up your toys. And you catch this thought, I'm not worthy of love. Okay? And so that weed, I'm not worthy of love, says, well, okay, but I have to love other people. And people like me. And so I'm going to, okay, I'm okay with it. But the, that, that uh, insidious growth of those, of those branches of that weed chokes out the relationships in your life. Because you don't believe you're worthy of love. You will do those things to sabotage the love in your life. And then you wonder why I don't have any love in my life. Or you create... I'm looking for love. You see, I'm looking for love is a heck of a lot different than I am loved. You've created I'm looking for love. So are you going to find love if you're creating I'm looking for love? Can you? No, because you created I'm looking for love, which means for I'm looking for love to exist. Love can't show up because I have, I'm looking for it. Do you see how, how weird that is? Those little subtle things. So that's why I threw bindweed up there because it, the, sometimes these weeds, they don't look scary. Okay, they don't have all the thorns and they're not real big, but they're just creeping along. You got to pull them, you got to pull them out. Let's go to the next one. So we talked a little bit about them running deep. This is a dandelion. So you see a little dandelion on the top, but look at that root. So that those weeds off times then are rooted in a very small core thought. So when you're doing your spiritual gardening, you have to get to that place where those little core thoughts are. We call those sponsoring thoughts. Okay? These ones down here. If I pull this weed out and leave this stuff, I might feel good for a little while. What's going to happen? It's going to pop right back up, okay? Because it still has its support system to create more weed. And it's going to pop up again, all right? So what does that look like? That looks like recognizing a false idea for what it is and letting go of your attachment to it. You see, when we have these ideas, we get comfortable with them. We get comfortable with I'm not really lovable, okay? Because you get some kind of payoff for it, all right? Down here in the roots, okay? And it might be as simple as when somebody rejects you, you go, yeah, I knew I was right. Knew, I knew I wasn't worthy of love. And just that being rightness is enough to fuel, down here, a little being rightness is enough to fuel the propagation of that thought. So spiritual mind or spiritual weed pulling and spiritual mind treatment are the same thing. Recognizing the false belief and then declaring the truth. The false belief is that I need this weed. The truth is this soil all around it has the potential to grow anything that you want. But not as long as that weed occupies it. So you've got to make space for your new creation, your new possibility. And the way you do that is by getting rid of those false beliefs. So when we're doing spiritual mind treatment, we look at the, small belief, or the false belief and we say, okay, so you think you're not worthy of love. 
kind of get that, yeah, when I was a kid, blah, 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 because usually we'll grab this stuff when we're little kids, and then we'll say, okay, well, what's the truth? And first, we'll, we'll do some argument with you. We'll say, well, uh, do you think God's in and through everything? Well, yeah. Okay, so if God's in and through everything, is God love? Well, yeah. Okay, so if God's love, and obviously we're not doing it this fast, I'm just for, for the sake of time. So if God's love, um, and, you're, and God's in and through everything, is God in and through you? Oh, well, that's a little different. No, it's not. Okay, so is God in and through you? Well, yeah. Okay, so if God's in and through you, and God is love, are you love? Well, yeah. But they resist it. Why are they resisting it? Because when I pull that root out, what's going to be left there? A hole. And we don't know what to do with a hole. In our life, at least we go, well, at least I know it's there. You know, but if you pull it out, then there's a hole there. Oh, maybe a spider's going to come out. You know, we don't know. We get scared. Okay, uncertainty. And we like certainty to the point where we are willing to put up with something really that doesn't serve us when we could have something great. So when we say, okay, is love, are you love? Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, and, and then it's the job of the practitioner. This is where we step up. Da, 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 da. And we say, you know what? I know the truth. I know the truth about you, and you are love. And you are loved. And I see that, and I see that perfection. I don't see that weed anymore. Because you see, once you pull it, if you still keep seeing the weed there, even though it's not there, your manifestation is going to fill that hole with another weed. Make sense? So we say, no, we're not going to look at that. We're not going to think about weed. All I'm going to think about is a beautiful rose growing there. I'm going to think about another possibility. And I'm going to hold that in consciousness because that's the truth. That's our divine source in the as good as it gets, as, as good as you can imagine. Let's go to the next one. So, you know, you have to ask, on these weeds, does it serve my intention? Kind of a tough one if you don't know what your intention is. So when we get to that sponsoring thought, we have to think about our intention in our life. Okay? Because we keep propagating it. Now, I'm just going to throw something out there that you need to ask yourselves. What things in my life do I keep ending up in? I don't really like it, but I keep ending up there. That's one of those things that you might be holding in there. This is a, that's, I believe that's thistle, milk thistle. And, and they, they blossom like that. They can look pretty nice. But if you notice that even looking at it, you're kind of like, gee, I don't know if I'd really want to touch that. Because, see, those are all thorns around the head. So don't make do. There's a lot better. Okay, let's go to the next one. So, what do I want to plant? And when we talk about spiritual mind treatment, oftentimes we feel like the gorilla. And we're like, what's this thing called mind? Okay, mind. You're it. You have everything that God has imbued to the cellular level within you. Your cells respond to your thought and your creation. And your cells respond to your thought and your creation. Okay, next. So, the first thing you want to do is, what does it look like? Maybe you've always been that person that had the, the terrific weed garden, but you see, you can't create what you can't see. And so you have to be able to visualize what your garden looks like. Now, uh, now we're not talking about visualization, like, okay, I'm going to hold this picture up and I'm just going to think about that. That's kind of like visual, that's creation 101.1111111. All right? What we're talking about is you have to know what that thing that you want to create, that you want to plant, really looks like. Because then you can make it. You need to know it to, at a blueprint level. Okay? Uh, we bought some, a couple new fire trucks. And when we buy fire trucks, uh, we have to design them. And uh, our guys worked for two years on the perfect design for our fire trucks. And, um, and so we went out to bed and we got the, you know, 
uh, contracted with a company to make our fire trucks. And they took our, our specs and they said, wow, this is amazing. You guys have really done a detailed work. Okay? And they put this all out there. And there was one little guy, one little new guy. He's a CAD guy. Okay? And he's, they do the CAD drawings. And the CAD drawings feed into the stress program that calculates all the, the physicality of the metal and the weight and everything like that. Well, the CAD guy, the new guy, didn't figure out or make the link to the, the, what, what the weight distribution would be. As a result, we got these amazing trucks that were overweight for the suspension that they had. Okay, simple mistake. All right, and so when I'm talking about detail in your life, the more clear you are on your creation, the more likely it is to manifest. Now let's say that your idea of being wealthy, the only picture you have in your head is, you know, well, I, to me being wealthy is, a, is sitting on the throne with a king's crown on me and the scepter and I got loyal subjects. Don't be surprised if you hold that picture in consciousness, you show up at Disneyland and the guy that gets called out of the crowd sitting up on the stage and they put a crown on you and you're sitting up there. And you go, oh, that's that. It showed up. Does that make sense? So the clearer you are on your garden, where do you want what color, vibrancy, that you can taste it, you can smell it, you can feel it. All those things help it to be more real to you. Let's go to the next one. It can be big. It can be little. All right? But don't limit yourself in your creation. The thing you have to ask is, what I'm creating, does it bring me joy? If you're creating something to satisfy a need, you're creating more need. It's kind of weird how it works that way. Because it's like, well, I need... I need love, so I'm going to create some love because so I, I need love. What's the, what's the big message? I need love. So you're going to keep holding that in the consciousness. So you don't want to do that. What you do then is think in a positive way and you see your end result. You see yourself bathed in love. You see yourself oozing love, people coming and loving you, you loving them, what that looks like, what that feels like, and then you will be drowning in love. But not until you visualize what it looks like. Isn't that cool? Okay, so that's how you make a spiritual garden. Let's go to the next one. You know, how are you arranging your new plants? By color? Alphabetical order. That'd probably be me. You know? <laughs> I don't know what they're going to look like, but those are the A's and the B's are over there and the C's. Okay? It doesn't matter how your creation looks. It's all up to you. So there's no should in your garden. It should be this. You're the gardener, the master gardener. So you pick that. Let's go to the next one. So you want to use a creative process, and that's what I've been talking about. Everything exists up in cause. That's all your seeds as a gardener. You have an infinite supply of seeds, seed possibilities. But we did this little experiment in, in our foundations class. I put a bowl of seeds mixed together, all kinds of seeds. And people took those and planted them. Not kind of, you know, not as enthusiastic. Some people were because, like, I love everything. Right, Tiff? Okay. So I'm going to plant everything. I'm going to love it. All right? Some were like, well, gee, I kind of like to know what I'm planting. And then we did the exercise where the seeds were in the packets and you had the picture. And everybody got all excited. Because when you look at the picture, you're not saying, well, gee, I'm going to buy the, I'm going to, I'm going to plant the little shriveled up tomato plant. We see the tomato plant on the cover, and you're like, wow, those are monster tomatoes. To, that's what I want to plant. Okay? So first, you pick your seeds. Then you, the process is you plant those in the soil. The soil of life, of source, doesn't care what you're planting. It only grows it. It supports you in your creation. So put in the process, and then the effect manifests. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so sometimes you got to get some help. Imagine that weed garden there. If you're having a struggle with this, that's why we're here. See, we're a spiritual community. And as community, we lift each other up. We win. All of us win when one of us wins. Okay, 
And so in that, you know, get that help. Or get the help from a practitioner. Because those practitioners can also help you see your garden and get right in there differentiating what's what. Okay, let's go next. Be patient with yourself. All right? Because it doesn't all show up the next day, oftentimes folks want to, they want to quit. Well, I knew it wasn't right. Okay? I knew it wouldn't happen for me. What happened is you just uncovered another sponsoring thought. Things don't work out for me. Okay, we got some more weed pulling to do. So we can make some, some clear area to plant more stuff. Let's go to the next one. Got me there? Have a little faith. All right? I'm not telling you this because I think it's a good idea. I'm telling you this because it works. It really does. You have to have a little faith, though. And when you plant it, let it be. How do you think it would be if you planted a seed... You went through all the process, you picked your beautiful little seed, and you planted it in the soil, and then you said, okay, let me see how it's doing. I'm going to dig it up, and I pull out my seed. Nah, it's not growing yet. Put it back down. And then wait a little while, dig it back up, pick, pull it out. Nope, still not growing. What am, I, what am I creating? Still not growing. So having a little faith is you just let it be. Okay, let's go to the next one. So your life grows where you water it. We've heard that, relationships. Things grow where you water them. Okay? This is the Libyan desert. That's, I mean, there's nothing for miles around. But if water shows up, things grow. And so what that means, and when I say you're watering it, that's where your attention is, where your true belief is. And so as you've planted something, you're not going to be watering it with, gee, I hope this grows. You're going to be watering it with, it's on its way. It's coming right now. They're growing right now. So literally, if you planted seeds, you could say, you know what, I can feel those little guys germinating and their roots are going down. They'll be popping up at any time. Okay? It's a lot different than, man, I hope it grows. Hope it doesn't, hope the hope drought all over my stuff and then the voles come and eat it. You know? It doesn't work out. Okay? Life grows where you water it. I love our garden. It's a thing of beauty. You missed a few weeds by the peonies, or, or peonies. Uh, like the poet said, the thing of beauty is a job forever. And she says, no, the quote is, the thing of beauty is a joy forever. It's like, whatever. Okay? So think about this as a joy. You're planting your joy. It's not a job. Okay? However, it does require your consciousness. Next. So here's the steps. Usually you guys see me, so I'm going to give you six things. First one. Learn the difference between weeds and flowers. Sometimes flowers can look like weeds, but that's that hidden blessing. And that takes wisdom. How do you get there? Through meditation and through brutal honesty with yourself. Okay? I always tell you to be kind to yourself. But sometimes you can use that against you. And so sometimes we have to uncover that and say, what's my real deal? Okay, what am I doing to get here? See the difference between the weeds and the flowers. Next one. Remove the weeds completely. Okay? Show no mercy to the weeds. You don't need them. They're taking up space for where you could put beauty in your life and you could make additional joy. Next one. Plant what brings you joy. You can, you, there's no problem with re reaching into the mystery bag of seeds, something's going to grow. But pick the things that bring you joy. The fragrance, the color, the, the, the beauty, the, the, how you feel. There again, replace it. And when you're thinking about your creation, do take the minute to ask yourself, does this bring me joy? Okay? Water what you want to grow. We just talked about that. Pay attention to your garden. Now, as all gardeners know, weeds pop up, okay? Gandhi had weeds. Jesus had weeds. They pop up, okay? They just do. But a good gardener doesn't say, yeah, it's a weed. I think I'll let it grow. Just let it choke everything out. They don't do that because they know that the garden exists in their conscious effort. And their conscious choice has an impact. And so... With that, paying attention to your garden, what's creeping up? And you can say that in your relationships. 
Weeds will show up in relationships. Weeds will show up at your job. They just do, okay? But we don't want to allow those to take up space that's valuable space that we could have another beautiful, joyous creation. Final one, enjoy. I love the word enjoy, okay? Because that means being in joy. So be in joy. Take the time, and I guarantee you, Everybody thinks that their garden looks like that first picture, you know, and everything's overgrown. You have a lot of beautiful flowers in your garden. Take the time, if you only have one or two, take the time to enjoy them. Savor them. Because when you do, you get more of what you enjoy. And that comes to you and keeps coming to you. Does that sound good? Okay. Well, that is the end of, of this talk on... on on, on uh, spiritual weed pulling and, and planting. I want you to know an important truth here. You're loved. The power of God is within every single one of you. There is no exception. You are loved, you're amazing, you're powerful. Your creators, your co-creators with your source. Everything good is yours. Not will be, is right now. And so it is. Let's pray.